Hey, y'all. Welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, my Saturday stream, which I always do with my friends. And today with me here is Landon. Say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. Oh, and what are we going to do today, Landon? Uh Uh-oh, we're going to cough. We're going to cough. You know, I'm just casually sick. So uh, I'm here and I'm ready to talk villains of Sailor Moon and ranking them, of course. We're going to do a deep dive and talk about all these villains and where we put them in order of our tiers and how we either love them or forget about them because there's a lot of villains in the four seasons, three seasons in a movie of Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, there is. Hi, Moisty. Welcome in today. Hi, how are you doing, my friend? I hope you are doing well. Um, for y'all that don't know, Moisty is actually going to be on our show in a couple of weeks talking about um, content creation. Uh, he uh, he, in his, his uh, offline life actually does work in social media, so he has a lot of fun stuff that he's going to share. Let's do a little, let's do a quick shout out for Moisty um, before we kind of get going today, because if you guys aren't following him, you definitely should. Uh, let's see. Make sure I type this right. Is this it? Did I do it right? I did it right. Is it going to play a clip? I don't know. It, it, the clip's not triggering. The clip's not triggering. Okay, but anyway, you should definitely be um, following that. Uh, that brief that I've totally filled out. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay, friend. Um, oh, I, it's because I didn't do your name right. Let me fix that. We love we love Twitch uh, technology as long as we spell everything right. I forget that there's an underscore at the end of his name. There uh, we go. There's the real fuck, Moisty, I... and there's a clip. Are you happy? Are you proud of me, Dad? Yes. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of you, son. Yeah. <laughs> he was uh, he was uh, dancing. He was doing so a Fortnite proud. dance. I, d- I actually saw it. We changed the Zoom thing so that I could actually see what's going on. Uh, and I saw, <gasps> I saw it. It was so nice. Oh, good, good, good. Um, so before we get started today, I wanted to show you guys a- another thing as well. Um, I dipped my toe back into doing some resin work. I totally forgot how to do it because I jacked these up. Like they're kind of sticky. I didn't mix it right. And I know what I did wrong. But anyway, these are some coasters that are um, Super Sailor Chibi Moon inspired. So you can see they've got her colors. And then so um, the case, I can't touch it too much because it's like it's jacked. But um, there's little there's little hearts there in the in the case um so yeah these unfortunately have to go in the garbage but i wanted to show them to you guys before i did that oh and i'm out of focus now fix that hello focus on me what's going on i am on? the queen i am the <laughs> there we go pay attention is that it's, a coaster yes blue they're coasters it's beautiful Thank i'm so you. glad i'm so glad you're getting back into resin work mm-hmm. um i'm very excited about that because i mm-hmm. i love resin artwork it's some of my favorites yeah, it's just um, I, I, you know, everything was so busy with moving, but I'm like, I'm finally trying to get back into like the swing of things. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And I um, and I want to I want to start like, you know, sharing some of the the work and stuff, you know, for the artists that I've hired and for the things that I've made with you guys. So um, as you guys know, part of that is some do 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 some stickers. Oh, my gosh. OK, here we go. Because... Here we go. Sticker packs. All right, you guys. So we are giving another away another one of these today, um, just like we have been. So we're doing another doing another giveaway. And all you have to do to be entered to win today is to do the the villain ranking with us. So I will send you a link to that. Put a link in the chat when we get to that. And um, and we'll be pulling another one of those today. Welcome in, by the way, Blue. Ah, welcome in, Kitty. I can't believe no one got the first. Congratulations, Kitty, on um, getting that sneaky, sneaky first. Uh, good job. <laughs> so yeah, we'll be sending out another sticker pack today. And I also want to acknowledge that the Magic Spoon promotion is still going on, although this particular episode is not sponsored by Magic Spoon. We are doing our normal Audible sponsorship, which is why you see in the title that it's audible, but um, the magic spoon promotion is going on all month. So, um, so, you know, it's still going, if you guys want to get the cereal, uh, I'm going to be trying it next Thursday. I may be trying one of the flavors and we'll try one of the flavors each of the Thursday streams. Also probably next week on Saturday, cause we're doing a legacy stream. So we'll be trying some more cereal so I can tell you guys, um, you know, if it's actually as delicious as it sounds. I've been wanting to try it for a while, so I'm actually like legit excited <laughs> to see if this Magic Spoon cereal is any good. So I'll I'll know very soon. <laughs> I 
So I yeah, love that. that was a couple of things I wanted to say before we got started today. Um, and, uh, and also just a quick reminder for you guys, Inner Stage Window is not a spoiler free podcast. We will be talking about spoilers. So if you're, if you've not seen anything of Sailor Moon Crystal, um, and, uh, and you want to go in spoiler free, then, uh, these are not the episodes for you. So yeah. <laughs> Do the thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Watch all right. Is there all anything of it. I- Absolutely. Is there anything I forgot, Lynn? Anything else we need to say before we get started today? I don't think so. I think you did it pretty good. It's almost like you're a professional at this. Ah, oh my gosh. Almost. Not really, but kind of. (laughs) Okay, here we go. Boom. Here is the rankings, you guys. And you can do it too. I'm going to pop a link in the chat for y'all. Here we go. And uh, and you should rank along with us. We will be doing a um, a drawing towards the end. So if you're ranking along with us, then please uh, do something to show us that you're doing that. So let us know in the chat what rankings you think these should do. Fill this out yourself. Post a picture in the Discord. Um, I'll be opening up the, the Discord towards the end of the stream so I can see who's doing that. You know, send us the link if you want to save it, if you have an account on Tier Maker. However you want to do it, I don't care, but rank along with us. And, uh, and we'll do a drawing for a sticker pack towards the end of the stream today. So yeah, this is out of my wheelhouse. That's okay, Blue. You can listen along and you can just, you can just agree with us. <laughs> you, know, you can rank them at how fancy they look. Mm-hmm. You could do that too. Pure vibes only. Vibes, vibes. only ranking is valid. Okay. Vibes it's only valid. Is 100% valid. <laughs> yes. Okay. And, um, and I just want to acknowledge that, uh, you know, when it comes to Sailor Moon, the villains are kind of like either they're kind of like awesome or they're kind of like forgettable, right? Yeah, I'm like I'm like looking at our array here and I'm just like, wow, they really do color block all their villains and they're the same mm. person sometimes, <laughs> copy and paste it. <laughs> uh huh, uh huh, a little bit. So, um, so we do have the uh, the Sailor Moon wiki, the um, fandom.com wiki pulled up. So we we might be reading some wiki entries too to remind us. Of <laughs> some of these villains that we uh, maybe don't remember also, quite as well. <laughs> I I don't know if you caught up on this, but I suck at names. Like it, it not even not even in Sailor Moon. I suck at names in every TV show mm. or movie that I ever watch. It just names mm. to me just doesn't register. So it'll be so fun trying to be like, and that's Prince somebody who did the <laughs> thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely one of those people that um, when I'm watching a show or a movie, I am way more likely to say the actor's name or like whatever their most famous character's name is instead of the character in that actual uh, show or movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll be like, hey, it's the character that did that one thing with that one person that I did like after that scene that I liked. Mm. <laughs> Just so good and so mm-hmm. descriptive I am. <laughs> yep so we've got the wiki so we're, we're gonna be cheating a little bit today you guys so uh <laughs> so yeah it's fine we can cheat that's right it's our show and we can do that all right Thank so we you. are gonna go ahead we are gonna go ahead and get started and we're gonna get started with the four generals so in japanese they're called shi tenno and that is jadeite nephrite zoisite and kunzite and uh, and I'm just pulling up pictures so I can I can know which is which because <laughs> I don't I, know about you, Landon, but there's only one of them that I'm actually sure who they are, and that's Zoisite. <laughs> and that's Zoisite, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I remember that from the original, not even from Crystal. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, Zoisite was a really important character in the original dubbed version because they cut all the others. Pretty much, uh, so like I I know who Z- Zoisite was. And Zoe said uh, in the original, that was the one they changed into a, a girl, right? So yes. that they could be, because in the in the anime, they had like a, a gay storyline. Yes. <laughs> hey, look, Dean Winchester. That's so me, Blue. That's so me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jensen Ackles. You're Dean Winchester, no matter what you do. That's like true. when I go back, even when I go back and uh, watch like My Bloody Valentine, which I know was like, you know, before Supernatural was super popular. He, that's Dean Winchester too. Sorry. <laughs> reason sam winchester is actually just dean from gilmore girls uh anyway. oh dean and dean <laughs> dean and dean dean and dean <laughs> dean and his brother sorry dean, boys. you know from gilmore girls <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so so that's who we're starting with you're actually starting with zoya site 
So, yes. um, so I don't know, maybe we should like flop back and forth with like talking a little bit about Zoe Sight. So I, I can start, I was talking about the character. So I'll start with Zoe Sight and like, maybe you can do the next one as far as like taking a peek at the wiki. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. So uh, Zoisite comes in after uh, Jadeite has failed. So um, so they are one of Queen Beryl's minions that is going to go and attack the Sailor Scouts. Um, if you guys remember from Crystal, they added in the fact that the uh, generals all have romances with the uh, inner guardians. And um, I'm trying to remember who Zoisite is paired with this wiki page is not telling me um <laughs> uh let's see let's see who is zoe side well let's with? reveal them all in act 13 so uh... yeah now i know in the original there's a zoe site and kunzite romance oh amy okay so zoe site is um is amy's past life boyfriend okay and uh and so that's that's who he is paired with and there he is right now so uh, with now that we kind of remember who Zoyasite is, uh, Landon, where where do you rank this particular general? Uh, Zoyasite, yeah, he. <sighs> okay, so I actually really enjoyed the knights from the original thing. So I think that they're all like starting at planet powder power here. But I think because I remember Zoyasite, I might have to put him at crystal power. Mm. just because there is like that like nostalgia piece to it not necessarily yeah. because he does anything good or like I actually particularly remember him much from season one but I appreciate all their storylines and I do like that so I think and also he's got those luscious blonde locks of hair but not like Targaryen blonde like you know like yeah, he's he's the ponytail boy he's, he's the ponytail, the ponytail boy, boy. Yes. And I definitely think out of all of the generals, he is quite a favorite of mine. Um, and and I, I think that that has nothing to do with Crystal. I think it does have to do with the original anime because yeah. in Crystal, they're all essentially the same. Um, so I kind of agree with you. Like, I think I think he's Crystal power level um, yeah. because uh, because in general, the generals are middle tier. I mean, what makes them, I think, not suck and actually have a little you can remember them a little bit is they do have connection you know they were tuxedo masks generals back when he was king endemion in the past um and uh and ruling earth so that lets me that that lets me connect to them a little bit more than some of the other villains who don't have quite that type of connection exactly when you guys discuss card captor sakura i could chime in okay well blue we will put that on our list as you know we are trying to slowly turn landon into a weeb so maybe we could do card captor sakura for our anime um, really, at some point, really trying. <laughs> you would like card captor. You would like card captor. I All think right. since you like Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, Crystal Power. I totally agree with you for for Zoya Sight. Also, right. Zoya Sight. When you look at the wiki, is the number one tra- trending. Oh, uh, fun facts. Interesting. All right, which of the generals do we want to do next? We've got the I, other three. I feel like we go from Koi's, uh, from Zoisite to Kunzanite, right? Okay. Like that is, he's the leader. He's a little bit cockier. Mm. He's got, he's got a little bit more of the attitude problem. He's paired with, uh, he's paired with Venus as mm. his lover from the past. Uh, mm-hmm. He also has the long flowing blocks, locks of like blonde hair. And I, he, is leader. He, he, has he has Lucius coffee. Malfoy hair. He does he has have Lucius. Lucius Malfoy. And he also has <laughs> Lucius Malfoy vibes. Yes. So I yes. feel like it puts him it puts him farther down than Soy Sight, but mm. I feel like that's like securely planet power. Because yeah, he is like, one of the ni- knights. He is one of the first villains. They do have that love story. Uh he has a huge connection with uh Mamaru or Prince and Dimian when it's revealed. I think he's, yeah. he's solidly planet power. Yeah, I, I would think he's a high tier planet power for me <laughs> yeah. um, because I also have to support my girl, mm-hmm. Minako, right? And uh, and so, you know, the one that's paired with Minako, I have to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Solid planet power, high tier planet power. They are like a power couple. They are like, mm-hmm. they are like beta power couple. Yes, I love it. exactly. Exactly. Because they're like both, they're like both the leaders of their respective groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, they're like yeah. there to like, support their their royals they lead the things i like it Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. Lucius uh, Malfoy, exactly, Kitty. He's got, exactly. he's got Lucius Malfoy vibes. He hundred percent does. <laughs> and it's, I love it. Mm-hmm. Totally here for it. Totally here for it. Here for it. Okay. Next let's do, um, sorry. I'm just navigating back so I can pull up the page for who I want. Okay. Let's do Nephrite next. Okay. okay. So Nephrite is, um, is our, our tall, dark and handsome. All right. He, um, in the original, cause again, they're all the same in crystal, but in the original anime, what I mostly remember him from is the romance with Zoisite. And then also he has an episode where he like woos, um, Naru Molly in the original anime, I think was her name. And, uh, and I, lo- and I love that because it gives her like a little bit more to do than just be Sailor Moon's normie friend that doesn't know anything about all of this Sailor Scout stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so he's um, he's pretty cool. He's got like an actual kind of like, um, you know, a little bit to him. So um, so he he comes in. He comes in second. So it goes like Jadeite, Nephrite, Zoisite, and then um, Kunzite. So to me, like he is still pretty solid into uh, in planet power, but um, but he starts to get a little bit more boring compared to our other two generals that we've talked about. So there's a little bit going on, but not that much. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that um, he at least stands out, right? I mean, mm-hmm. maybe it's the brunette hair, but he stands out. And so yeah. I'm, I'm down to put him in planet power, but knowing that he'll probably shift on the back end of planet power. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a lower, a lower tier planet power. Um, yes. And then, not to like move too quickly, but I just found this very funny. I pulled up the wiki page for Jadeite just to see if I could get more information about him. And literally, literally all of the about like section is Jadeite is a character from Sailor Crystal Moon. Ah! Yeah, you kind of have, you have to go to the anime, you have to go to the anime info tab to actually get some information um, or the manga info tab. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, this is, yeah, I mean, you get, you get where, like, his biography and, and like, what he's actually doing in each of the episodes, but, mm-hmm. like, at least there's usually, like, a little blurb about them, and there's mm-hmm. nothing about him, and that's because he's nothing, he, like, yeah. Poor baby, poor baby. He's, like, lo- like, I almost want to put him on star power. I feel like, I feel like for him, it's so sad because he matches with Ray, right, and Ray is definitely the one that is least interested in romance. So it yeah. almost kind of makes sense that they put the most boring of the generals with her. Um, but poor Ray. She doesn't poor even Ray. want a man and she gets the worst man. <laughs> checks out, to be honest. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm because he is a knight and the only reason he is in the planet power is because he is a knight. And I yeah. love the knights so much. And they and actually love, have some interesting backstory. They have some interesting backstory. And like, they're a force. Like, I'm here for it. I'm here for mm-hmm. the vibes. I hate him, though. Yeah. Boring. Boring. Ugh. Okay. We're going to go to my um, favorite next. <laughs> yes. Least favorite of the knights, unfortunately. Least, yes. Least favorite of the knights. All right. So next we have a queen... Beryl. Okay. So Queen Beryl is kind of our first like major villain that we're introduced to in Sailor Moon. And she wants to take over the Moon Kingdom. She is like, she's like a rival queen. And, um, oh, Lan is not, no, waste no time. Waste no time. Like why no time. even debate? I'll, I'll explain <laughs> it in a second. You can keep talking, but yeah, like, yeah. look at the screenshot. <laughs> so like she, she basically has this romance with Endymion back when he was leading earth as its king. And, uh, and she's very jealous that he does not return her affections. And that is her whole reason for wanting to take over the moon kingdom. Now for her, of course, she is not um, doing this completely of her own volition. She is influenced by an Eldritch Horror, which we'll talk about in a moment. But um, but yeah, so uh, great, amazing, amazing villain. I agree, cosmic power, 
Um, I love her. I love her backstory. I love her motivation. I think she is actually scary and threatening for a first season villain. Uh, she's great. She's also hot. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you give me a sexy redhead who is also evil and a scorned lover of the secret prince of Earth, I'm gonna fall in love with her. And if you also make it so that she's scary, I don't know, like 13 year old me never had a chance and 28 year old me still loves her. <laughs> and you know, what's the best part about her? Her whole evil plan is like, I'm going to infiltrate his friend group. I'm yes. going to go make best friends with all of his friends and make them hate him. She's actually That's my like, plan. She's actually like the smartest on here. Also mind control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to tell you. Like the Beryl, Queen Beryl rooted herself in the back of my mind. And this is now the standard. Like, I'm so yep. sorry that we got here so early. You're going to hear another one pretty quickly up here that's on cosmic level. But like Queen Beryl is it, bitch. <laughs> yeah. She's so good. She's so, She's good. so good. Yeah. <laughs> this, I, I mean, there's nothing there. Her there's Really nothing. like. Not she, my favorite villain. We'll get to my favorite villain later, but right. like she is up there. And the fact she that she is the villain of the first season is part of what um, made me fall in love with Sailor Moon, yeah. you know, as a kid. Because you guys know, like, I'm I'm big into into the villain. So and they they start strong in Sailor Moon. She got, she got the Maleficent vibes a little bit where she's like, I'm pissed that I wasn't invited to the party. Like, I know <gasps> we'll, we'll get that a little bit later, too. But like, mm-hmm. it's got those vibes in there. It's got the, like, especially in the original dubbed, like, there wasn't a love story between Endymion and Beryl. They cut it out of the American, the way that they did the dubbed. Um, But, like, knowing it in Crystal, I'm like, hell yeah, I'm here Mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Jealous lover said what? (laughs) Yes. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I'm just a simple girl. A simple queer girl with simple queer needs. And Beryl checks every box. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's let's do where next our Eldra Tor. I can't see where did, where did you put her? I cannot see where you put oh, her. Oh, I put her co- cosmic power. Okay. She's cool. high tier cool. for me. Cool. She's cool. she's cool. definitely cool. like if I were to make like a top ten um Sailor Moon villains like list, you know, BuzzFeed article style, like she would up. she would be one of the first one that pops in my mind. She's great. Love her. Amazing. And then we got what's his face? I can't even remember this Eldritch's name. Um, Queen Elgis- Queen Metalia, I'm pretty oh, sure Queen, is her Queen name. Metalia. I'm just gonna Google. Because I'm just like so distracted. I'm just gonna really quick to make <laughs> sure I am right. Queen Metalia, Dark Kingdom, yes, the Queen Metalia. Oh, the Dark Kingdom, yeah. Yeah, so Queen Metallia. Queen Metallia, what's her deal, Landon? Hold on. Opening it up. I mean, Queen Metallia, <coughs> me dying. Um, she, <laughs> oh, she, no, the Eldritch Horror is getting Landon, you guys. <laughs> it really is. Uh, no, she she wants to take over, she wants to take over um, the Silver Moon Crystal. Like, she wants to take in the Silver Crystal. She's searching for it in order to gain power. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is before they know where the princess is like they haven't really learned that Serena that's Serena oh my god the 90s that is (laughs) that Sailor Moon and that Usagi is uh is the princess uh and they like so they're searching for this and so really she's just trying to like get at this silver crystal in order to take over the moon kingdom Mm -hmm. um and she's using barrels like need for Endymion and for like to her own devices and also you know she's cool she is cool I like I like her uh I just she just when you got a number two that's so much better than you you can't you can't be a cosmic power right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like like the fact that we didn't even remember her name She's almost kind of like just this manifestation <laughs> of Beryl's inner desires right? so that they can be like, oh, it wasn't fully Beryl's fault that she was doing this. 
Um, and Sailor Moon is kind of is kind of like this, right? It likes to it likes to manifest um, outwardly the uh, the th- dark things that are going on inside of us. So that's almost kind of like what Metallia is, which I feel like is the main mistake here and main mistake in season three. And we'll talk about that when we get to Pharaoh. But like, it would have been cool if this was just like inside a barrel and something that like all of those evil feelings had like emorphized like had like turned into would have been Mm -hmm. much more powerful much more cool would have been really great but because they wanted to like make sure that number two and that every villain except for the eldritch horrors and those are that are distinctly not human um have like an out or an escape as to why they're behaving the way they're behaving Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep (laughs) So for that reason, for me, um, she is one of the, the most of the Eldritch horrors are pretty weak to me. Um, and uh, and so but she's she's one of the better Eldritch horrors, but she's still pretty weak. So to me, she is um, she is prison power. Yeah. High tier prison power, but still prison <sighs> power. Yeah, I'm going to put him in prison power, too. Yeah. And, and maybe. Actually- Go ahead, Landon. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, she's actually not the highest Eldritch horror. We'll get to an Eldritch horror that I like better than her. Yeah. Um, she's 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 okay. She's, she's okay. She's a bit forgettable. Really, truly. Yep. Um, so I know visually you guys are seeing Black Lady next, but I'm actually gonna skip over her because yeah, we're gonna, um, we're gonna, get we're gonna her. yeah, I'm gonna build up to her. So first, let's talk about Cone because she looks like a cat girl. So we're gonna talk about Cone next. That's this that's this girl right here, this purple yes. girl. Okay, so Cone is part of the Black Moon Clan. We're on season two now, you guys. We're on to season two. So Cone is part of the Black Moon Clan. And the main thing that she does is she goes off um, looking for Chibusa uh, with Rubius. So like she and Rubius kind of like do their little mission together, going and looking for Chibusa. Um, When she goes and fights the Sailor Scouts, she is paired with Rey and she has like fireish powers. So she's a fire cat. All right. And when it comes to Black Moon Clan, just in general, um, I got to be honest these these like the 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 lower tier of the villains here they're they're really fucking boring okay i'm sorry they're really fucking boring they don't do anything they don't do anything um i don't they only exist so that you can have a pairing with the inner scouts and and I that's think, it i think the thing that i appreciate about the season 2 is that aesthetically way more diverse and way cooler than the season three true so automatically puts them above season three and puts them because of the aesthetics in star power not because of who they are or what they're doing but at least like she's a cat girl on fire like that's what i was about to say like she's got got this cool skirt going on that elevates her out of prison power for me just the fact that she's a fire cat girl um so yeah i would agree star power I think, power. yeah, it's again that, that like she's just she's a fire cat girl and her and her sisters are all real cool. Like, mm-hmm. yes, I appreciate this. Yeah. So and I think you're going to find that we're probably going to do this with most of these like low tier season two villains. Um, I'm my ranking is going to be purely on aesthetics. It is. <laughs> do I same. like the look? <laughs> Half of these villains are all the same here. Mm hmm. Nothing but cannon fodder. Exactly. These guys are really just cannon fodder so that we can get little character development moments for the inner guardians. Like that is their function in the story. That is all they do. There's no pretending that they do more than that. They absolutely do not. Uh, I also, I also want to argue, argue for, uh, Berthier. Is that her name? Uh, the blue the blue one, yeah, the Amy yeah. one, yeah. The Amy so one. Do you want it? Let's do her next. Then tell us yeah. a little bit about her. So here's the deal, aesthetics wise, also like just cool, just cool. Uh, she goes up against Amy. Is this where she does chess? Is this chess? So I think this is the together. chess episode. This I think season two is the chess episode. And I think that that just I really appreciated that episode, like from Amy's point of view, and I really mm-hmm. appreciated like how well like the villain was suited towards her and then I mm-hmm. also just appreciate her aesthetically so I'm even going to throw her in star power and I think I might throw her above cat on fire 
oh, we're going to finally disagree. We're going to finally disagree. But only, um, only because I like, I like how they actually did the con, like the contrasting of her and Amy more than I like the contrasting of Ray and Cone. Uh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, but I have to, I have to disagree. And hi, Garnet. Welcome. Hey, hi. by the way, Garnet, here's how you can get some stickers today. Garnet, Garnet's on a quest to win some of these stickers. Okay. Here's the, here's the tiers that we're doing. We're doing Sailor Moon Crystal Villains. So all you have to do to get, be part of the wheel of names that we're going to do towards the end of the stream is participate in the ranking so you can do this along with us kind of tell us in the chat what you're doing if you want to save it and send us a link in the discord or post a picture in the discord that's fine too however you want to do it to um to rank along with us uh go for it and then we will we'll be doing a sticker drawing towards the end aesthetics and vibes are a valid way to pick things you guys you're you guys know better sometimes thank you kitty i agree <laughs> vibes oh vibes uh your vibes know better sometimes okay so here's my deal water is the element that I am most interested in. Okay. I'm, I'm a cancer. Okay. We know this, um, in my heart and soul, I love the ocean and I'm sorry, but, um, her water aesthetic uninspired. It's a bathing suit. Yeah. It's a bathing suit. It's a bathing <laughs> it's amazing. suit. Do you see those boots? Like, I mean, those boots are cool. Those boots are cool. But if you were going to do like a water like design, because... there are way better water designs in later seasons. This is like bottom tier of like, I need to make a water aesthetic girl. One piece bathing suit. Yeah, she's smart. So she's like kind of conservative, right? No frills, no skin. Um, <laughs> Do you I'm see sorry. How much skin? She's showing so much more skin than yeah, anybody else. She is than the, her other counterparts. But if she's water... And a bathing suit shows a lot of skin, and she's showing the least amount of skin for different bathing suit types. I'm sorry, prison power, low tier prison power. I do love the character Ma'am. development moment for Amy, but her aesthetically, she could be better. She could be better. I appreciate the aesthetics. As a queer woman, I will sit there and say I appreciate the fact that they gave me a villain in a bathing suit. Boring. Boring could have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Nako Tachi, Nakuchi Not knows so much about knows so much about fashion. Okay, knows so much about fashion. She, I know she could have done better because she does I'm do so better. Sorry. No, no. Here's the deal, though. We got the one piece bathing suit with the sexy little triangle under the boobs for possible glimpses of under boob. You got it. High rise cutoffs. You got the knee high boots with the elbow length gloves. Monochromatic, amazing bullshit. With the gray blue hair, a hundred percent hearing all of the fashion in this. I get it. I see you. I appreciate this aesthetic and it did things and I appreciate it. Could be better. <laughs> I just think it could be better. I think there are better okay. ways to do a be water wrong. aesthetic. It's That's fine. What... It's fine. You to know be what? Wrong. You know what? You know what? <laughs> The Spectre Sisters would have slayed if the power were power were in their outfits. Oh my god. <laughs> I know what you mean, Garnet. I know what you mean. And have fun doing your chores. Saturday is my chore day too. That's what I that's what I'm always doing before stream is is trying to finish all my chores before it's stream time. <laughs> all right. Okay. Let's do another one. Okay. We're gonna talk about um, I'm not sure how you pronounce her name, so bear with me. Calaveras, I think is how you say it next. She yes. is the Black Moon Clan member, thank you, that goes with uh, Sailor Venus, okay? <laughs> she has this little leotard and skirt number. She has a really cute little, like, bow in her hair, okay? She also has cool bo boots and gloves, I'm just saying. Um, she's not as cool as our fire cat girl. She's, she's not as cool as our fire cat girl. Um, so to me, she doesn't get that elevation up to star power, but um, but she's she's better than our fish girl. So so I'm gonna put her like kind of in the middle of prison power. I'm putting her in prison power too, but I'm putting her like I'm putting her in prison power. No, she's yeah. boring. She doesn't do anything either. Like she and I can't even remember in the nineties anime if they gave her anything else to do. I don't think they did. They didn't. <laughs> so boring, sorry. Boring. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Yep. yep. 
All right. I, who is the last one? Pets. Okay, Pets, Pets is the, right? the last one. Yeah. Which, of course, uh, goes against Sailor Jupiter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, here's the deal with this too, though, at this point. I'm really tired of Sailor Jupiter having like going up against the brunette strong like people i'm just like okay like she's cool too y'all can give her some cool people i don't like this character she she doesn't do anything in like any version of it so you're not wrong to dislike and i'm sorry but out of all of the different aesthetics um hers is like it's okay i mean i see they're we're trying to do something with like this whole like bird thing going on here with her shoulder but it just doesn't look good together it just doesn't it doesn't match itself no it's like there is a clear definition of fashion in these two and the cat girl and fish girl got it bird girl and whatever the other thing is no yeah bottom tier bottom bottom tier. tier yep yep um okay so we are now going to move forward to the kind of like next tier of um of the the villains from this particular season. So that is going to be um Emerod and Rubius. So I'll go ahead and talk about Emerod. Um she is she's the the green lady, okay? She's the green lady and um and she basically just like shoots energy balls. She doesn't really match with with any of the sailor scouts, I don't think, but, um, but Rubius and Emerald kind of exist to make like a little quartet with the two Prince brothers. Right. Um, so they, they work for them. Um, yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't do anything. I mean, she goes off and tries to help Rubius find Chibiusa. Like she's kind of part of that group, but, um, but yeah, narratively, narratively, she, she only exists to round out the the group of those four honestly like low tier super low tier prison power for me yeah i agree i she just kind of existed there like Mm -hmm. i think the issue and i think we talked about this in the later seasons is like they can really do as much storytelling with half the amount of villains that they have yeah, and I think that there's too many villains in this season. I think this this whole entire tier, like I I do appreciate what they do with the conflict between the brothers, but honestly, if it were me, I would have taken all four of these characters and just pushed them into one prince. I yeah, okay, fair. I'm okay with the conflict between the two brothers because mm-hmm. I think that that's interesting and I think it actually adds lore to mm-hmm. like the future. But mm-hmm. I'm not yeah, the the other two I'm like meh about I like her aesthetic like I'm not gonna lie her aesthetic is like I put her I put her in crystal power if it was just if it was based on alone. looks alone but she literally does nothing she does nothing, she does nothing. nothing like in more, any version she's, yeah she's she's more boring than uh than like our last elder tour yeah yeah she's very very boring um not about it and Rubius isn't that much better he's at least a little bit more calculated and villain like mm-hmm but I'm I'm not like a huge fan of him. Yeah, you're right, Garnet. Homegirl was super stressed. Nako was working um, on getting the anime off the ground at the same time that she was working on this arc. But there are other elements of this arc that are really, really good. So, and I know that she knows how to do this stuff better. So yeah, Rubius. Rubius um, definitely has a better aesthetic than Emerald, in my opinion. And um, he has he has a better relationship with the princes. But here's what annoys me about Rubius's story. In most versions, after they defeat Rubius and he goes away, the two princes that supposedly were bestie best friends with him don't give a fuck. They're not like, I can't believe you killed Rubius. They're not mad about it. They're not nothing. He um, he's supposed to be like the next tier, but he's just as cannon fodder as uh, as the the four that fight the inner guardians. Yeah, no, he's he's just a filler. Um, yeah. I don't particularly like his aesthetic. He is more villain like, and so I appreciate. Well, he's kind of he's like but... he's like army guy, right? So he's like yeah. their 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 main fighter, and so he kind of like has that um, army bro kind of look, and uh, and so I think it matches what he was supposed to be. I just don't think his story was executed in a way to really show what, at least in my opinion, is the idea behind his character. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next, we have the princes, two princes, um, one who will adore you. I can't remember the next line of that song. Anyway, we're going to talk about Saphir first. Saphir <laughs> is the um, younger brother of the two, and he has the dark aesthetic, right? But he is actually the slightly better one than uh, than the other. He's a little he's a little bit more good, okay? Like he's not the one that has the um, sexual assault scene with Usagi. He's actually um, kind of a nice guy, swept up in all of this stuff from the Eldritch horror, of course, that influenced them and, and the rest of the Black Moon Clan. Um, I I like his aesthetic, like you know. Uh, he kind of looks like a, a, a villainy version of Mamoru, um, which is, makes me I was, interested. I was going to say, like, it's so yes. sometimes I'd like look up and be like, Mamoru, what you do? Oh, no, he has the upside That's... down uh, moon. And now I know it's not Mamoru. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Alpha Tiff. How are you doing, my friend? Um, it sucks they kind of flopped on this art because the Black Moon were kind of like activists against the monarchy. Yes, I agree. Like this season has a lot of good ideas in their lower tier villains, but they don't execute them well at all, at all. So for that reason, for me, Saphir, just like Cone, gets an elevation up to star power. Um, not as cool as Cone. I mean, I'm sorry, but he can't beat Firecat. Uh, but I I do really like him. I like his aesthetic. I like what he does in the story. He actually does something. Um, and I have a little bit of interest in him because I'm like, mm, I don't know. That's like the kind of guy that if he was fleshed out a little bit more, I'd be like, yeah, that's my villain. I like him. I actually like him more than both of the other two mm. uh, for that reason. There's more potential. The other two, there's no potential. They're written for their episode and then they're off. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. one though it's like okay if there was a little bit more development a little bit more black story if we had more than 12 episodes if they didn't have to waste four episodes on the four other villains yeah. we'd find out a little bit more and i'd appreciate that he is ripe he is absolutely ripe mm -hmm. for um fanfic and uh yes. and so so yeah uh really great character to put in your sailor moon fic i think yes yes oh yes. i'm so glad alpha tiff i'm so glad that you're doing well I'm so glad. Okay, Landon, tell us a little bit about the other prince. All right. Well, <laughs> Prince Diamond Day. Uh, he's he's a little, uh, he, you know, is a little bit more evil than the other <laughs> villains that we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. uh, he straight up kidnaps Queen's, like future Queen Serenity, or I guess it's Usagi as Sailor Moon, in hopes that she becomes neo queen serenity and tries to sexually assault her mm -hmm. uh and is a little bit sexy about it yeah uh, and especially the crystal version about it oh yes. my god the crystal version is of this scene is so hot you guys if you haven't seen it like it is the hottest version of that scene that yeah. exists <laughs> yeah <gasps> It really is. And he, he has the whole villain monologue thing down. Like, honestly, like, in my opinion, real good villain. Yeah. Like, crystal power level villain. I like the dress he put Usagi in. Me too. He has great fashion sense. He knows what makes Usagi look pretty. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful dress. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful dress. Super, it's a beautiful dress. It's super villainous. It's the same. It's the same sort of like vibe as that guy that keeps all of his mother's clothes in his closet, so that when he kidnaps women, he dresses them up as his mom. It's okay, same, but like, it's okay, but it's like different font. Is like that. It, it, that's like a whole thing, though. That's like a whole it's thing. A, I'm I here love for it. it. I'm here. yeah. <laughs> high tier high tier crystal power for me high above um power. above zoya site yeah yeah really good villain really good villain um it's like it's kind <laughs> of like when you're watching this season it's like you're kind of wading through all of this boring shit and then you get to him and it's like like fireworks going off like oh oh, oh he's so cool he's so scary <laughs> why am I rooting for the bad guys also why do i want why do i want prince and Demian to come in here and slap this dude's face into two pieces. What is oh happening? My God. That would have been so cool. That would have been such a cool moment. Okay. This fix it, fix. So 
fix it fic where um where Mamoru actually comes in and, and saves Usagi and it becomes like a whole brawl between the three of them. Wouldn't that be amazing? I just need two princes fighting over a princess. It's honestly what I need. I am a simple bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Mel 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 Yandere. Totally agree with you, Garnet. Totally agree with you. Mel Yandere. So yeah, that's the princes. Okay. So next we are going to do Wise Man. Okay. okay. So we because we're saving we gotta save the best for last, you guys. But the Eldritch Horror, the Eldritch Horror (laughs) of this season is Wise Man. It's this guy. It's this guy right here. And uh and he might actually like. Yeah, actually, he is pretty good. Like, he has the similar stick as the other um, Eldritch Horrors, but he, like, is really hands-on. I feel like it, it, what what breaks him away from the other Eldritch Horrors is that he is really hands-on with his people. Like, you see how exactly he goes in and manipulates the princes. You see how he manipulates Chibiusa. Um, like you really see the way that he talks to them and the way that he influences and convinces them. And he does it in a way that is truly believable to me. Like I can see how people would be pulled in by a wise man and be interested in what he has to say and be like, ah, oh, maybe he's right. Let's try this out. That sounds like a great idea. Um, so as far as Eldritch Horrors go, he's one, he's one of the best ones. I also think there's something interesting about the fact like where this story takes place in the future rather than in the past and Mm. so instead of enemies of a christ of a kingdom that has already fallen we're seeing enemies of it actively trying to defeat a kingdom Mm -hmm. in the future and Mm -hmm. i think that that does give life and a different storyline to the villains that we don't really see again Mm -hmm. uh and and because of that it's a little bit more powerful sort of story yeah. And a little bit more like there's there is a story there's a story difference between revenge and a power hungry and he, and he's power hungry rather than revengeful. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I totally I, agree with you. I think he's awesome. Yep. Uh as like a behind the curtain master of oz sort of manipulator. Yep. Yep, Garnet says charisma of a dictator. Agree exactly. Exactly. And so obviously to me has the people to support him for it yes yes so like i'm still not a huge fan of of the eldritch horrors in general but to me he's the highest tier of the eldritch horrors i put him as a low crystal power yeah i think i'm gonna do the same i think i'm yeah. gonna put him uh i was like i was debating whether he's crystal or planet but i think he's crystal yeah um i i agree that like eldritch i the eldritch horror in general but i'm okay with an eldritch horror being the bad guy especially in a world that like we started dealing with like sci-fi elements. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But the, it gets a little tiresome after four seasons of it. True, true. But he's definitely a good one. So yeah, totally. I totally love that. Okay. Last season two character, Landon, you know, tell us a little bit. Tell us. A, <laughs> you got to talk about it. You got to talk about it first. I Build some fucking suspense, care. girl. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Have you been watching? Have you been listening to me for how many weeks has it been now? Six? Six weeks? <laughs> it's like, fucking Black Lady. It's, mm. it's Chibi Usa all grown up. It's the girl mm-hmm. who just was like so desperate to save her mother that she stopped aging for 200 years and then had to travel back in time and like be an adult in a mini child's body, deal with all this bullshit got promised to the world by a man who manipulated her that she grew up seduced the man tried to seduce the man that would be her father one day and, and just like was a total fucking badass the second half of the second season is like really horny <laughs> i don't know what you want me to say i cannot build anticipation on that when it's literally like hey Landon let's get all of your dreams and put it in a girl (laughs) (laughs) she is great she is great I agree I um prefer Beryl ever so slightly but I don't think that that's has anything to do with the quality of the two characters it's just what tropes appeal to me um but they are they are basically to me like on the same level of like good villain writing yeah very very good. good It's, uh, yeah, showed off her developmental psychology here. Absolutely, absolutely, Garnet. Because I think what I think what 
really stands out and the thing that I wish from Beryl, I think Beryl would have scored higher if she had been the bad guy all along. The fact that they put an Eldridge being behind her and made it seem like that she was just this woman being manipulated gave her less autonomy and less power behind it. Mm-hmm. If she had been the source of the Eldritch horror, she had been the evil thing all along, I think she would have been up and above because she would have stood on her own with that. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I know what you that, mean. But where it's like, be, yeah, when it comes with when it comes to um to Black Lady and Chibiusa, you need that push for her. Like she could not have become Black Lady on her no. own. And and that's something that we the audience get to see is her being manipulated. We know that that is what's happening, and it's acknowledged and appreciated throughout the entire thing. So that when she has her story arc and gets to a moment where she's like healing, or like where she can be forgiven mm-hmm. it, it like that feels like a s- full and complete arc whereas with mm-hmm. Beryl it's just like oh we gotta feel sad for her even though we didn't know any of these things for 12 episodes uh yeah yeah yep mm-hmm. yeah I know what you mean I know what so, you mean. I totally understand why the tropes would appeal to the barrel but for me it just is better writing with Chibi Usa too makes sense it does make <laughs> sense Um, All right, you guys. So this is now season two up here as well. So I just want to pause here and um, and we're going to do a couple of things. First, I want to let you guys know that we are giving away another pack of stickers today. We're going to do a wheel of names just like we have done um, uh, for a couple of the others. But here's the stickers. This is what we've got. I am going to be opening up a shop with these um, at some point in the very near future, but I'm giving away the mock-ups, right? Because I don't need I don't need the mock-ups in my house. So if you want to win those, here we go fill out or participate in some way in the tiers that we're doing. Garnet, I've got you on there. I've seen, I've seen your comments. So, um, so there's the link. You can either participate by talking with us in the chat about it. You can participate by actually filling out the tiers and, um, and posting a picture, um, or a link in the discord, however you want to do it. I'm, I'm flexible. I'm cool with whatever. And I will, will, you'll be part of the uh, drawing for a pack of stickers towards the end of the stream today. I need to decorate my PS5. Oh, that's a good idea. A black lady to, uh, PS5. Isn't that nice? Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, also, uh, the Magic Spoon promotion is still going on, but this episode is not sponsored by Magic Spoon. This episode is actually sponsored by Audible. So, Landon, what what should they what should they be uh, what should they be doing? Tell us a little bit about Audible and what we're recommending today. Oh, uh, well, as always, I have a book because I love to read. But as always, I also have crippled with anxiety, which means I don't read anything but YA books that were published 10 years ago. Uh, No, that's okay. That's when YA was the best. (laughs) Lies and slander. No, um, but I think like, especially when we're talking about uh, like fantasy and uh, um, magic, that is when YA was in its renaissance period. So... Mm. Uh, for you, I have this wonderful series called City of Bones, which is also the Mortal Instruments series. It, uh, you know, some people find that it's a little taboo, but I find that any book that was inspired off of fan fiction uh, should 100% get its stay in the sun. Um, this, this, I chose this because there's a lot of eldritch horror demons shit and a lot of fighting of these demons and a lot of uh, uncomfy tropes that are uh, sold to us as romances. And that's my favorite kind of YA romance. All of my favorite things. (laughs) All of your favorite things. I do think you'd actually enjoy this series. Um, And you can listen to it at audible.com. And if you go to audiblefreechild.com slash enter stage window, you get a month for free and you can download an audiobook. And it helps support the show. That's right. Audibletrial.com slash interstage window. You get your first <laughs> month free and um, there's no obligation. So even if you only do that free a month, that is okay. You are still supporting the stream if you do that. But I personally think Audible is a really good service and um, and I use it uh, in my like actual reading life because I ain't got time to sit and actually read a book on text. So audiobooks is how I do it. And uh, Audible is where I do get most of my audiobooks. All right. I am so sorry. I actually, I actually have like really got to go pee. So Landon, if you just want to introduce kind of a little bit about season three, I will be like two seconds. Y'all know I'm the fastest peer in the world. So like, like 30, 30 seconds. I'll be right back. She has her, she has her earphones in, but this means that I get to like control 
the stream for a whole 30 seconds. Oh, uh, no, I'll just do what I'm supposed to do and talk about season three. Uh, season three, we've already talked about how much we dislike the villains. So expect for the first half of this to be, you know, us being unimpressed. Um, but I think season three has some of the most interesting storylines. If you want to hear about how we talked about the World War II connections with its villains, then I suggest that you go watch our stream over on Karen Terry's YouTube channel uh, about our season three, because it's a lot of fun. I don't have access to the chat either right now because my computer hates me. So I have no idea what's being said, um, but now Karen is back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't miss anything. You didn't miss anything. They're just okay, catching Pokemon good. in the chat. Okay. Oh, Pokemon. <laughs> yes. All right, you guys. So we start off season three with the witches five and we don't find out this is a flaw we talked about in this particular season. We don't find out until the end of this season that uh, the, the witches five part of the death busters, they were actually created by Dr. Tomoe in his attempt to create like um, supernaturally perfect people okay so the witches five um unfortunately kind of like the lower tier of the um the previous season they don't do much so oh. we're gonna be going based on vibes okay so um the first one i've got pulled up here is um Udiel. she's she's the she's the red with the red shorts okay not to be confused with the red skirt Okay, she's the red shorts. She is the fourth strongest of the witches five. They all have like these levels. Okay, because there's so, a connection. There's a connection to, uh, to fascism here in in this particular yes. season in season three. So everybody's got to get ranked. Okay, everybody's got to get ranked. Uh, this kind of like plays into it, right? So she's the fourth strongest, and um, and she I, goes for she goes for Ray. So she goes and tries to fight Ray. Uh, go ahead, Landon. I was going to say, can I also mention, and can we knock off an entire level of potential, given the fact that their names is the Witches Five and there's six of them? Yeah, cool, because one of them is actually two, right? Yeah. So that's crazy. But yeah, but I would true. just like I would just like to knock off an entire level of potential because they have false advertised themselves. Mm -hmm. And I hate that. I hate mm -hmm. when you're like, oh, this is the, you know, Witches Five, and it turns out there's six of them. Anyway. Yeah. I, uh, I forgive it a little bit only because the anime's gimmick with this is so funny. I don't know if you remember this, but in the 90s version of the anime, <laughs> they have this door to their lair, right? And it says, like, the witches five. And as the um, sailor scouts defeat them one by one, like, they cross out the five and write four. <laughs> like, hysterical. it's so funny. That's it's so, so funny. funny. <laughs> but it's not funny if they're where the witches five, they kill one of them, change it to four, and there's still five of them. You're it's right. So funny. That ruins You're right. the joke. It ruins You're the right. joke. You're right. Um, and then I have to say, for these guys, uh, they basically have kind of a very monochrome aesthetic, uh, where they're basically like their color plus black and like very bold lines. But I'm not nearly as attracted to these designs as yeah. I am for the lower tier villains in season two. So for that reason, Udiel and probably the rest of them are gonna go into low tier prison power. I'm just like yeah. not that into I, them. Yeah, I kind of hate it. Yeah, yeah. So she's the yeah she's the red one. You're hovering over the right one, Landon. Yes, Udiel. She don't she don't do nothing. She don't I, do nothing. And I'm not that into her aesthetic. I'm not into her aesthetic at all. The red is throwing. I don't like this color red. It's throwing me off. I think I might have to put her at the end. Yeah, it's like it's like a pinky red, but it's like not quite pink, but it's not quite red. And it's it kind of like, just looks like candy, but not in a good way, like because like, there's no gloss to it. It's like very matte. Yeah. So it's like a matte Jolly Rancher, it's not like appealing. Red, like is super bright compared to the others. And there's yes. like too much red, like she has the red hair and the red sh shirt and the red pants. And I'm like, man, if she had just had like black hair with all of that, life would have been good. That would have aesthetically, I would have been okay with it. Because, but I think that there is too much red in comparison to everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know like what it. you mean. I don't like it. Yep. All right. <laughs> like Landon, hair, pick though. the next witch is five. Who are we going to talk about next? I don't think we should go to our next ready. Next, the other red one? The other red one, which is, is that Iridel? No. 
No, your Uido is the one we just talked about. We just talked so about the Uido. Other, the other it, red one is part of the twins, Cyprine and Pit. I don't know how to pronounce the other one. But anyway, they're they're red and blue. And um, let me try to figure out which one is which, because I don't remember. Uh, Pitfall. Pitfall. Uh, Pitfall is uh, the red. Okay. All right. So Pitfall's the red one. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about Pit. We can do Pitfall and Cyprine kind of at the same time. Tell us a little bit about uh, Pitfall and Cyprine. Also, annoyed that the reds aren't twins. Because that would have made sense. Anyway. No, no, no. But it's like the it's the they're red and blue because in, in Japanese. Okay, we're gonna teach we're gonna teach Landon a weeb thing, guys. Are you ready? Because in Japanese, there is the tail of the red oni and the blue oni. And so this is something you'll see in anime over and over where you have a, a red um coded character and a blue coded character, and they relate to each other in some way. They are usually would be will be like siblings or rivals. Or something like that. So it's a it's a folk tale um, about a red oni and a blue oni. That's why they're like that. Okay, got you. Yeah. Well, Pitzel is the shadow self of Cyprin, uh, who really only comes out when they are attacking. Um. Sa- when they're attacking Sailor Moon. Yep. Um, yep. And they're supposed to reflect like Sailor Moon and Sailor Chibi Moon at the same time. And that's why she divides in two like that. Which I understand, but like, <laughs> I like her aesthetically more. Yeah. I would say out of the Witches Five, these two are probably my favorite aesthetically and narratively, but they still don't, I, I'm still not excited about them or interested in them. Oh, no. I just and think they're that they're still, marginally they're still better. low level prism. Um, I'd wear both their outfits. I would too. Actually, they have the best ones. Yeah, they're they're cute. That little little tulip skirt thing. So I'll yeah, them, I think I'll them there. Yeah, I think that I think that they're low level prism power, but they're slightly above some of these other boring bitches. So like, okay, I'm gonna put them here. So so on mine, I've got the those two twins, and then I've got Emerald, and then I've got the other, which is five that we talked about that I already forgot her name. Low level prism, yeah. Low level prism, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I so think I, I think we're in the same. I think we have the same order right now. Yeah, uh, we're pretty. Oh no, Rubius is Rubius is above them in mine. Oh, Rubius is. They're all the yeah. same. They're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> they all kind of mush together at the end, don't yeah, they? They do. Yeah. Um. All right. Next, let's talk about Mimet. So Mimet is the yellow uh, orange one of. Do you love her the, name. Yes, I do too. She actually has a really cute name. And here's what I really do like about her. She's a second member, by the way, of, that we meet of the Witches Five. And um, and I love that it's like a little ballerina tutu skirt. And she's got this like really beautiful, like crystal, like headdress tiara-ish thing that she's wearing. Um, she has she has like a decent aesthetic as well compared to the other Witches Five. Um, she goes and let's see, who does she match with? I'm trying to find who she matches with. I know she goes and fights like, like Uranus and Neptune defeat her, but I, I oh, Venus, she matches with Venus. Venus. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm, I'm actually a little bit interested in her aesthetic. I'm always interested in the aesthetic of the Venus ones. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that's, this is, this is her. So she has a <coughs> marginally better aesthetic than some of the other witches five, but I don't even think her aesthetic is better than the twins. Like I still think Mm-mm. the twins have a better one. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just like the others, like she don't do nothing. She goes and fights Venus. She gets defeated at the end. I actually think, yeah, I, cause I like, I, I like green aesthetic. We're going to talk about green hair in a second. Yeah. But Mamet, I think is such a cute name and mm-hmm. that for that reason alone is above Rubius. Yeah, well, not above Rubius for me, but <laughs> but she is cute. She is cute. The Venus counterparts are always very charismatic. Exactly. Like um, like her when you when you watch it, I feel like she actually does invoke some memories, and I could see somebody being like very interested in her character and like want to do something with them from like a, a role player fan fiction perspective. But in reality, in canon, just like the other, she don't do anything. Yeah, I can definitely see why she would be popular in the fandom. She is yeah. very cute. She's very, very cute. Um, Greenie, though. Oh, my God. What is her name? Mm, I'm double checking who the Greenie's name is. Telu. Green is Telu. Telu is adorable. And I <laughs> love her aesthetic. And she's she's top tier for these. 
for these. As far as the witches five go. As far as the witches five go. Um, she's okay, you know. I mean, she uh she's uh the counterpart to Sailor Jupiter to Makoto. Um, I do think like her outfit is is out of all of these outfits would actually look good on a lot of people. Like a lot of people I feel like could pull that off. Um, it's because it's a little bit more um toned down and simple compared to some of the other ones. Also, leggings are good at flattering um most body types, right? But she still bores me. Like I I put her below Mamet. Like, meh, she's okay. I don't even remember her scenes. I don't even remember her scenes. But like I actually, because I was talking about this before, I appreciate they didn't give the Sailor Jupiter a brunette strong guy to fight against. They actually gave her like a petite sweetheart. Uh, You're right. And also, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I love the color green. <laughs> so it does fit the aesthetic. Yeah. No, you're right. She she more brings out the um kind of like mothering side of, uh, which I, of Makoto. Which I think with Makoto, because she is strong and tomboy esque, even though she's not, but like that's definitely the stereotype they have her in prior to season three. Um, mm-hmm. it's like really nice to actually like sit her and see her not just being having to be strong and tough, like or has fighting someone who's strong and tough. Yeah, there's more to her. All of the girls have, you know, I mean, they are like, they are like very simplified for the characters, but they all have at least two personality traits. And um, and it's nice to see Makoto's kind of like secondary personality trait come out in her villain side a little bit. So yeah. Um, all right. The the last of the witches five is V. Louis, and her aesthetic is basically all about crystals. Okay, you guys. So she is Amy's counterpart, and um, and there's like a whole computer thing whenever she fights. It's it doesn't really give Amy a lot of good character development. But anyway, here's what I want to talk about though. I said that the previous seasons water boring, okay, boring. But this one is like crystals and ice. It is actually an interesting like water uh, aesthetic that you could do. Doesn't mean it's a good aesthetic. She's still boring ass witches five. But this is what I mean by like, let's have a little bit more creativity in what you match with in regards to the water. Like she's still got like a really sleek look to her, but she's got those crystals in there. So you're reminded like, oh, yeah, a lot of Amy's powers center around ice and rain and how cold water can be. So anyway, she's still low tier prism uh, power. Okay, don't get me wrong, but this is what I was referring to when I was saying that I just don't think that season two's water villain is as good as they could be. I moved her up a spot because you're right. Ice is an interesting way of interpreting water. She yes, moved up and- a spot. She's still second to last because her aesthetic is just like not pleasing. She's second to last for me too. She's second to last. <laughs> I would like to see like her combined with the water one from season two. Like they're like take elements from both. And then I think you would have like a really, really interesting aesthetic for um for Amy to fight against. Her yeah, eyes and this powers mean- are to distract and hinder her enemies. Yes. Exactly. Very strategic. I, I do like that. But see, and like with fire, like because I'm a huge fire, fire element fan. And I'm just like, they just keep fighting fire with fire. Like that's just <laughs> what keeps happening. So like the idea of just fighting water with boring water, that makes sense to me. <laughs> Checks out. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But we move, we move on from the witches five. We move on from the witches five to, um, to get to some of the other villains that are part of the death busters. So I don't know who you want, who do you want to talk about next? We've got a couple of other let's ones just, on here. Let's just move up the line. Let's go to, uh, uh, what's her, what's her name? Kaola Knight, the yeah. assistant lady. Yeah, let's that's Kaola Knight. Knight. Okay. Um, Tell us about her. I, she is the assistant of Dr. Tomo, Tomoe. But she also is working under Pharaoh not Pharaoh ninety as uh, the boss of the witches five, and it just would have been so much easier if they had consolidated and didn't have as many villains. Uh, I like her, and I like her aesthetic. I think she's pointless as a villain, uh, and is like just adding too much, or is just 
because of the Theron 90 existing, uh, I wish she just was an evil assistant. But I hold, a ho- first of all, we're back to the sexy redhead thing. Second of all, <laughs> her aesthetic and dress is amazing. I know that this is not how I should pick my villains, but this is how we pick our villains, okay? Uh, and the third of all is that she like, I have a very like uh, melancholic, just like nostal- nostalgic, that's the word I was looking for, a view of her from the 90s TV show because I really mm. loved her in the 90s TV show. Uh, so she's she's probably scoring high, higher because of that more than she deserves and i recognize that but really where are you gonna put her i think i'm gonna put her bottom wow she does not deserve that i think she does not i understand i understand you have to go with what's in your heart and you just have to live your truth but damn landon that's that's some i think mm. because the 90s really carries her yeah pharaoh 90 plays a really small role in the in the night like it's mostly dr tomoa 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 thank you who is being like who is being taken over and controlled by pharaoh 90 but pharaoh 90 plays a very small role in it he's just kind Mm. of an off-screen character and so you see a lot more of these two villainous people working together Mm. (laughs) and that's carrying a lot of this Mm. like i I recognize that okay i mean i I understand why she's crystal power for you. She, she's not even, she's not even like for me, like I agree with what we ended up deciding for season three. Like she should have been cut. There's no reason that the witches five need a leader. Tomoe could have been that Tomoe could have been that and, and just cut her. Um, There's no point. He does not need an assistant. Like to me could have been cut and then we could have had all of them. I, I agree. I mean, yeah, um, I would have what I would have done if it were me is I would have taken her and Mistress Nine and Pharaoh 90 and combined them all into one character that was Tomoe's assistant, right? That was like leading him down yeah. this dark path. I think like something like that maybe would have been better. Um, you Which know, is- we talked about it. We talked about this like narratively she shouldn't exist like if you were to go back and and do a rewrite on this like you wouldn't you wouldn't include her probably not but she's a sexy redhead and from the 90s I do remember her because from the 90s she's a scorned like assistant who just wanted Dr. Tomoe's attention and praise and then he like went off and like went and followed Mistress Nine and she's like what the fuck are you doing I've been here the whole time yeah (laughs) So, so for that reason, for me, her and Beryl in... are the same person, different fonts. I mean, you're right. She's just a shitty version of Beryl. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but that's why for me, she's, she's like in this section of prism power here where I've got like Queen Metallia and, uh, and some of the star power. No girl. No, she doesn't need, she shouldn't even exist. She shouldn't even exist. She's down in prism power. I mean, she's in like the, the top of the prism power where I've got you know, Queen Metallia and like some of the uh, villains from season two, but like, no girl, no. Well, you know, okay. I I would be sorry, but I know you like that. (laughs) I'm going to move her down to planet power, but she's at the top. No, keep her in crystal power. power. Don't, don't, don't let me change what's in your heart. Now I'm thinking of Mistress Nine and I want, she is, Mistress Nine is a step above, but isn't cosmic power. So I'm moving her down to planet power. So I can put Mistress Nine in in Crystal. Power. Okay, okay. Well, let's talk about <laughs> Mistress Nine. Okay, so Mistress Nine is kind of an Eldritch Horror. She is um, Master Pharaoh Ninety's assistant, and she comes yeah. down and first possesses Hotaru. And there's like kind of a, a possession thing a little bit with um, with Kaola Knight. And, uh, and she doesn't come in towards until like the end. But what's really cool about her character is she really allows us to have like this parallel character development that's going on with Hotaru um, that kind of shows us another side of what growing up very quickly means. Similar to what we got with Black Lady, um, mm-hmm. whereas Black Lady made a choice to say, I want to grow up fast. And here's the repercussions of this choice that I made with Mistress Nine. Hotaru is forced 
to grow up fast. She is not her choice. She does not want to. And here now are the repercussions of that. So it actually has like some interesting narrative stuff going on there. And for think- that reason, even though I'm not like super into her, she's she's like um she's planet power for me. She's up here with like the generals and stuff. I think she's interesting. I think also for for me, what I really appreciate about her is that she also gives us an insight into not only Hitaru, but Hitaru and Sailor Saturn are two very different characters as well. Yes. And especially in this hearing- season. Yeah, and we've been fearing Sailor Saturn. So seeing like all three of them kind of inhibit the same person and being able to understand that they're like three different places on the spectrum uh, is another way of like really comparing of figuring out where this character is. And so I appreciate the the comparison with that as well. Um, So for me, I'm going to put her in Crystal Power at the end of Crystal Power. She's still a little less than... um, than the wise man is, but uh, she's she's got she's got she's up there in crystal power. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, I mean, I think for for you that's fair. For me, she's planet power, but like I I definitely see the appeal for her. Yeah. Um, Garnet says uh, she's into Mistress Nine's whole look. Yes, actually, yes. um, for the kinds yes. of cosplays you do, I think you would make like a really beautiful Mistress Nine. Um, if you haven't Garnet. done one before, you should, you definitely should do be doing that's- Mistress Nine. That's how we get you stickers, dude. That's how we do it. That's right. <laughs> I will pay for the I will pay for the shipping myself. Oh um, no, no, I got it. I we got it. We got it. But yeah, we'll we'll make sure you get some. Get some. Um, get a Mistress Nine cosplay up here. Mistress Nine, <laughs> fuck yeah. Um, but yeah, she has a very good look. I think. Um, I think for 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 that is part of why she's she's uh high up there like she's 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 so much better she's so much better i think than some of the other villains that we have in this season so especially also like compared to the other ones it's like oh she's doing something interesting you know um i'm into that also love love an evil woman that likes to call herself mistress in a deep v and and she is true she is truly evil like she has she's truly. not being manipulated no. she's like i'm here for the evil give me more please this is the first time i really feel like we have a female character who's done that and i know that she's she's partly or, like uh eldritch horror but yeah but she's female coded and in yeah. a way that like is a lot more overt than we had with Queen Metallia. Like Queen Metallia is female coded because she's called Queen Metallia and she has a feminine voice, but looks wise, there's no gender there. No. She's just a blob with a face. And and she ha- and we also have like with with Mistress Nine, we have a uh like not only is she female coded, but like because she exists in her to Haruto's body uh we also have her in line with the uh theme of like bodily autonomy and the lack of control of the body and so like seeing someone who is woman inhabiting a woman's body who is not in control it's awesome there's a there's a lot of things there that connects to it y'all can see why we really really love this season (laughs) all right who's next with its mediocre villains Mm -hmm. uh we got dr tomoe um yeah who so in the night we discuss this on our show and if you want to watch us discuss it a lot more in depth go watch the vods but uh we talked about how very different from the 90s show this dr tomoe is and more in line with the anime and in the 90s they made him basically that he was being controlled um by mind control and didn't make choices of his own and in this one he is full-on full fascist uh and full-on willing to like experiment on his daughter on his daughter and be an evil person um and just for like the sec- sake of like medical curiosity not even for power yeah. uh and, and i he, love that goal, kind of villain yep his goal is to create <laughs> the perfect people and he does not believe in bodily autonomy so he will do anything he can to do that he's amazing okay and there this is no secret he's my very favorite he's my favoritist favorite villain of sailor moon he's amazing top of the cosmic power for me um i i love him i think he's a great villain great villain i think that if pharaoh 90 had not existed he would have been at the top for me Mm, mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. if if we had been okay with the idea that the big bad of this season was uh, a human who had found technology that had magical like that that the eldridge horror horror wasn't conscious 
but was being tapped into and used by Dr. Tomoe, mm. he would have been, he would have been the top because that would have been interesting and it would have been a thing. He's still the lackey. And for that, even though, even though everybody else technically is the lackey on my cosmic power, it, he doesn't rise to the top. I know what he you is, mean. He is in cosmic power. He's awesome, but he's not better than Beryl and he's not better than, uh, than dark lady for me. I accept your argument. I think we can, we can happily disagree <laughs> we can, on we this, can disagree one. With this one. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so next is the elder Tor- horror of season three. We've got master Pharaoh 90. Um, so basically he's a sentient version of like, um, of a, of nuclear fallout there. Visually, it looks like a nuclear bomb. Uh, his whole thing is going in and like changing your body and p- possessing it so that it gets like destroyed from the inside at, at the nuclear level. Um, and, uh, and, and he, he's the elder tour of, of this season, but, um, honestly, like, I'm just going to say least favorite Eldritch Horror. The only thing interesting about him is the fact that he's visually when he's attacking, it creates this like very mushroom cloud look. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I wish he wasn't there. I agree with you, Landon. It would be better if he wasn't there. So I'm going to throw in that. I'm going to put him in star power because the mat- he's not my favorite. He is my least favorite. I agree with you. And I don't think he should be there. But thematically, he adds to the story as far as having that World War II ideal. And yeah. his power is good. His story is bad. His reasonings are bad. I don't particularly like it. But how he works and the themes that he plays with is integral enough to season three that i'm gonna put him in star power for it yep yep i would agree low tier star power for that reason because of of, because of how what he does at the end and the visuals that we get associated with him but i agree one of my least favorites in general yep okay so here we go we've got season one two and three we are moving on to the movie um and eternal has the animal trio. Okay, so who who of the animal trio do we want to start with, Landon? I mean, I feel like we can't start with the best. So, but we can start with the least favorite. So I'm going to go with Tiger's Eye. Tiger's Eye is your least favorite. Okay, tell oh, me, he's not, tell me he's more. Not, he's my he's my mid. Oh, he's wanna, your mid. I didn't I didn't want to start with my the favorite. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Tell us about <laughs> tell us about Tiger's Eye. What does he do? Um, he. Oh, sorry, trying to remember and also trying to pull him up. He goes and attacks Ray and tries to he marry does, her. He does it. He does try to marry Ray. Um, he goes and attacks Ray and tries to marry her. Uh, and also, he's just aesthetically on point. Mm-hmm. He's just fantastic. Uh, uh, they're so gay. All the animals, they're so they're gay. They're so gay. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so just, they have they have a great like every villain I love has a monologue sort of personality and he would he'd a hundred percent monologue and does kind of monologue a little bit. And it's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tiger's eye for me, this is my favorite Ray villain. Okay. He Mm -hmm. actually taps in because this whole arc is about dreams and goals. He, for the first time taps into something that feels very deeply Ray to me and how she feels about how she relates to um to the potential of marriage in her future. I also love his aesthetic. Oh my god, he has a whip, you guys. He has a whip. Yeah, it's a tiger training thing, you know. Oh my god. He is high tier crystal power for me. High tier crystal power. Yeah, he's up there he's, with um with Prince Um Diamond to me. He's like a he's like less Yeah, like, exactly. That's where I put him too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he's he's on he's on he's on level with that. Yeah, he's on level. Okay, next let's go to Hawkeye. Um, out of the animals, Hawkeye is definitely my least favorite, but what yeah. he does narratively is cool. He has like a little shop that he sets up. He attracts Makoto into the shop and is like, you know, you could do this too. This could be your dream. You don't have to, you know, be strong. And Makoto says, no, being strong is part of my dream too. Okay. I can do both. I can have it all. Girl boss. Yeah. 
Um, but aesthetically, he's not quite as strong as the other animals, although his aesthetic is still amazing. Super gay like the other animals. So Very love fair. that for him. Best, um, but as far as like the characters in Sailor Moon that don't have long flowing hair, that have short hair, he's got the best short hair of all the short hair characters in Sailor Moon. Um, so for that reason, for me, he is, and, and of the villains, like he's so interesting. He's so interesting. So to me, he is either like low tier crystal power, high tier planet power. He's like really on that line. I'm going to put him at high tier planet power. Um, Mm. I think that, yeah, he is just the least favorite of the, of the Amazon trio. He just, of the animals, he just... He little he fades a little bit into the background and narratively he does tell a good part of the story, but they all do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's it's hard. And I feel bad for him because like he would be cool if it weren't if you weren't being compared to like two of the coolest, most interesting villains yes. <laughs> in the whole show. <laughs> yeah. I love the manga Ray's attitude when it comes to marriage because she's so devoted to her spirituality. Yeah, and you really see that with the interaction she has with Tiger Eye. Yeah. So that's those two, but let's talk next about our favorite okay. animals, Fish Eye. <laughs> Tell us about Fish Eye, Landon. So Fish Eye is just cute and adorable, kinda. Uh, he um, goes in and he, the big thing that he does is he falls in love with Mamaru and he just kind of interrogates him and asks him uh, questions that just is, he's it's a great part of the 90s and wonderful. anime. And there's a reason why they changed him into a woman in the 90s anime. And that is because so gay so queer uh and just flamboyant and fun and all of that and so i'm gonna he's top tier crystal power for me i know that Mm -hmm. someone might put him in a cosmic he is a fan favorite uh and aesthetically he's just awesome (laughs) he's just to me to me he's lowest tier cosmic power in the 90s anime he is absolutely the standout of the trio yes, and in he crystal he's very good now of course in in the manga the thing between him and mamaru doesn't really happen so it doesn't happen in crystal he just has the interactions with amy but i just the way that he interacts with amy is like so smooth and beautiful um it, he just is very he's very sorry yeah he's very charismatic and he yes. has a lot of like charm yeah and it is fun like it is fun seeing how the trio changed like in the manga versus um, in, in crystal or, yeah. or from the nineties versus crystal. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I love, we're going to talk about water aesthetic <coughs> again, you guys get ready. Okay. He has such a cool water aesthetic. It looks like a life jacket. Okay. He's wearing like, if, if, like take a life jacket and make it fashion, right? That's what he's wearing. He's got this like super gaudy, like fishbone design of a zipper. Like this is just amazing. Oh my gosh. Hey, anime girl. How's it going? Hey. So happy to see you here. Fuck yeah. Sailor Moon. We're talking about villains today. We're doing we're doing the tiers. You can do them with us if you want. Let me link them to you. Um, I don't know. You might actually want to do them, I think. Let me give you this link. There you go. You can do you can do the tiers with us. We're doing a, another sticker giveaway if you um participate in doing the tiers with us. Okay, so uh, fish eye, amazing. I love every version of fish eye as well. Um, this is one of the characters where I feel like you get something cool about them, no matter which version of Sailor Moon you are you're looking at. Um, I just I just I I don't have enough I don't have enough good things to say absolutely top tier water villain top tier water yes. villain uh, from just, from your from the water girl top tier water villain also something about like seeing the lower level villains being likable is so nice and such a nice change compared to the three other seasons where it's like oh yep. we like obviously we obviously care about these villains and i know we're gonna get into the amazon quartet in a second but we care about them way more than we care about the other ones obviously Obviously, obviously. <laughs> Queen Nehalenia blazes. We haven't quite gotten to Queen Nehalenia yet. We haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, we're we're not we're we'll be there soon. We'll be there soon though. Um, okay, so next we are gonna talk about one more kind of low-tier villain. This isn't one of the animals, but this is the one that matches with Sailor Venus, and it's these knife twins. Okay. Um, the knife twins, I'm not gonna lie. 
they're super boring, especially after coming after the the yeah. animals. They don't really do anything. The only thing that they do is because they throw knives. You get this like amazing, um, you know, action packed, super sexy shot of Sailor Venus um, Minako with all of these knives almost stabbing her. It, it looks real good, y'all. It looks real good. That's it. That's in the. But and I'm that's just like, lie. that's a shot of her. That's not even them. It's just their power. They're boring, you guys. They don't do nothing. I, I'm putting them at the very end. The reason being, because by this time in the movie, because of all the ups and downs and mm-hmm. trying to figure everything out, I forgot they existed. <laughs> I forgot they existed. I was like on here like, who the fuck are those boys? They are very forgettable. I'm not going to lie. I, I almost I, didn't put them on there because you notice like a lot of the like, super lowest tier villains I didn't put on here like you know the four generals they like they'll summon these Yoma and there's four of those two and I didn't put those on here you know and I almost didn't put the knife guys on here but I was like no they're Sailor Venus's counterpart you know if I'm putting the animals on here which I have to then I got to put the knife twins um don't even don't even know what their names are I keep just calling them knife twins (laughs) and I'm not gonna bother looking them up so (laughs) not gonna lie I was wondering who those two were on the tip knife (laughs) Knife t- twins work for me. See, Apple Tip, I'm not the only one. I was like, who the fuck are these guys? Oh, right. They're Sailor this- Venus's counterpart. They throw knives at her. It's very, it's very fast. It's like blink and you miss it. There's there's like this one really sexy shot, but like they are so boring. They're so boring. Uh yeah. they don't do nothing. <laughs> Nada. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that is uh, that is the lowest tier. So next, we're going to move on to the next tier, the Amazon Quartet. So who, who do you want to start with with the Amazon Quartet, Landon? They're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, aesthetics then. We have to go with aesthetics. You got to go so with just, aesthetics. So, okay, and I but did tell us, comment but tell on us the about... fact that with these aesthetics. So these, these are the Amazon Quartet. Um, we find out later that they are going to be the Sailor Scouts. They have their Sailor Scouts and the Comets because they will be awakened for when Chibi Usa is ready to have her own scouts when she comes of age in the Silver Millennia. Um, so we the we know that they're going to be important later on for Chibi Usa. We fight them because they've been woken up by, um, they've been woken up and have been like undermined control uh, to fight the scouts, to try to destroy them, knowing that they're going to be powerful be- beings in the future. So mm-hmm. aesthetically, I love the fact that they are a little funky and a little different. And we got some weird hairstyles in ways that, you you know, Sailor Moon, like thinking of like Sailor Moon and thinking of Chibiusa and Dark Lady and all of their weird ass hairstyles. These hairstyles are even weirder and will take Mm -hmm. hours to get into. And I appreciate (laughs) it because I know that's like the nod to the future, like style. And so Nako aesthetics- Takuchi somehow predicted what Zoomers that love <laughs> Sailor Moon would want to wear and somehow in the 90s. <laughs> crop, top, crop top, short shorts, and comfortable pants. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, so who do we want to start with? Which one do you want to do first? I mean, let's start with the whip. Okay. All right. Whip girl. That is, I'm just double checking. That's Vess Vess. Okay. So Vess Vess, she is Sailor Vesta for the asteroid Vesta. Um, she has a whip. She has a red aesthetic. She's got the fire. Um, where does she rank? What do you think? Okay, because they're from the future and because they're cool and they have a cooler background, I'm not going to judge them off of what they were in the show. I'm going mm. to judge them off of aesthetic and possibility of the future. So I'm putting them in star power because mm. A, prison power is already too big and B, uh, the <laughs> fact that they're going to be future Sailor Scouts is cool and automatically makes them better than any other villain we've talked about that's in prison power. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to put her at the end of star power because I don't think she's the best of them, but mm-hmm. aesthetically she's cool. I like her hair. She's got a whip she, we are wearing and rocking the bikini. Life's mm-hmm. good, man. Life's mm-hmm. good. <laughs> okay, so for me, I I would agree with you on basically our all fronts. I think they have so much potential for fanfic because of what we know is going to happen to them in the future. Um, I love their aesthetic. I love all four of them's aesthetic. I think it's very cute. But the truth is, they don't really do anything. They they come on the heels of the animal trio, which is like oh my god, amazing love. 
Um, so when I when I think of them together, she is definitely one of my more favorite ones. Not my favorite is favorite. Okay, if y'all don't know what my favorite is favorite is, I like help you. I'll tell you when we get there. But um, I know, I know already. <laughs> but she's she's got a whip, you guys. She's got a whip. Got so a whip. for me, so for me, she is actually kind of in the same vein as like Cone and uh, and Prince Sapphire. Okay. So okay. she is in star power. Um, but she's not low down star power like Pharaoh 90 is. She's she's kind of towards the the better side of the star power tier for me. Awesome, awesome. Yep. Yeah. So next on here we have Pala Pala or Sailor Palace. So for the asteroid palace, she's our water girl, okay? So she's got a little water bikini. Okay, she's got some cute little shoes. She's got a lot of accessories, a lot of little like bubble bubble looking accessories um she's cute right but i'm not as into her as i am um our fun fire whip girl i think that she's a little bit boring um but i'm gonna think all the water aesthetics are boring compared to fisheye like that's just how it is you guys so to me she's in star power but she's towards the back with like master pharaoh 90 fair 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 fair. yeah so that's that's so pala pala that's that's how i feel about her yeah, I put her. I put her in the back there too. Yeah. Um, all of them kind of blur together for the most part. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can talk about Sarah. 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 So she is Sailor Saris. She is Sailor Saris. Yeah. Sarah. Sarah. What do you think for Sarah? Sarah. Sarah. Again, just she's the leader, which is good. We mm-hmm. love that. We love a leader. Uh, <laughs> they all blur together i'm not kidding um mm-hmm. i think that she has the dopest hair out of all of them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh so i'm gonna put her a little bit up in the front um i can definitely see why her and should be used to gonna get it on the future yes so she she is uh the leader of the amazonas quartet so that means that she's going to become should be sailor venus yeah um and y'all She's pastel pink and yellow. I love her for the exact same reason. She's my favorite. She's my favorite. I love her for the exact same reason. I love Cone. So to me, it's like kind of a tie between her and Cone for star power, for the top of the star power tier. She is the cutest. She is the cutest. If I could pull off that outfit, I would, okay? I can't wear a top that small, but it would be nice if I could. Um, I love her hair. I think she's just... She's so cute, you guys. She's so she is very cute. cute. She's very yeah. Karen. Karen, if there was a Sailor Scout, this would be her aesthetic. I agree. Yeah. I I mean, I would have a slightly different outfit, I think, but I would have the same color yes. scheme. The same color scheme. Yeah. We'd probably have more of a traditional Sailor Scout outfit just because we are of that generation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the Zoomers, after all. Yeah. I think I'd 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 cover I'd I'd cover my top a little bit more. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know what I'm saying? I could still I could expose my belly. You know I was I was there in the early 2000s, but um but yeah that that tops a little bit too much. <laughs> All right. uh, oh, you love you love June June Garnet. I understand. Um, affinity for the darker skin characters that makes sense. Let's so yeah, June, June June. Okay, tell us about June June. Um, so she is sorry. <laughs> she's sailor jupiter's foil I'll, I'll, i can talk That's while you call no yeah she's sailor, uh, she's jupiter's, sailor foil. jupiter's and you can tell by the color scheme you can tell by the fact that they needed a tough tomboy uh mm-hmm. she's wearing pants she's wearing something comfy uh she is the lesbian who has all of the stuff ready to go i'm adding that to canon but you know that it's true, it's uh, true. she is the mom figure and we love her for it yeah um, to me, though, she is kind of at the bottom with our water girl. So to me, for these four, it goes with the pink girl, the red girl, the green girl, the blue girl. Like that's that's how it feels for me. I mean, you can't. It's hard to beat a whip. OK, it's hard to beat a whip. It is hard to beat a whip. But I do appreciate also here is that this is the first kind of like. Person of color ish that we've seen. Like oh, as far as yeah, as far as a true. tan a tan color of all of our villains slash uh, good guys, and so I'm yeah. like, man, I'm gonna like the fact that other skin tones exist. I'm gonna just throw that in there and appreciate that for a second. <laughs> mm, I definitely know what you mean. Um, '90s anime 
everyone had one skin tone. There really well, wasn't a lot of variation, which is what made Cowboy Bebop stand out. We actually we have a Cowboy Bebop episode too we, that you can go and see about that. But yeah, everyone kind of had this very similar like East Asian white person-ish which, color skin. Which understandable to the effect of a lot of this, an- all of this anime, but more importantly, the manga was born in Japanese culture. And while there are a variety of skin tones in Japanese culture, it is not nearly as much as you would find in other uh, Asian like countries. It's yeah, um, it's a it's, it, it is it tends to be a lot more pale. They are more um, ethnically homogeneous, yes. although they do have other ethnicities. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Pluto's kind of tan. Yeah, Pluto's a little bit tan too. Actually, now that you point that out, that is kind of true. Um, yeah, Pluto's, I don't think Pluto's as tan as June June, but probably <laughs> at the not. point that she's introduced, she's the tannest character in Sailor Moon. And it's just, as, it's interesting to sometimes just see a little bit of, I know, obviously we're dealing with a, a world that is fantastical and made up, but it's good that yeah. it's in there. <laughs> yeah. And, but that's no excuse. I mean, we know that that's no excuse. Nope. And I'm, and I'm sure, um, you know, that if Sailor Moon was uh, was created now, that there would be a more variety of skin tones and body types. Because yes. I, I definitely get from impressions from uh, from interviews with Naoko that she wants Sailor Moon to be for all women. All so, women. Yep. Yeah. But just, so it looks just, more dark throwing, than the anime. just yeah. throwing that in there of something that is like an observable fact. <laughs> yes, that's true. All right, you guys, we have got two left. We have got first our leader of the circus that I'm just double checking what her name is because I can't freaking remember. Um, I do like her, but I'm just uh, the Dark Moon Circus arc to me is the villains are so overshadowed by uh, by the three animals. animals that I forget. Did you just say it, Landon? I didn't hear you. Yes. Yes. I said that. Um, but also what's, like, I wait, what's do her like- name? Oh, I didn't say her name. No. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm looking up her name right now. Um, I do, however, like that she is. Oh, wait, hold on. It's trying to. It's, the, it's the old lady. The old lady is what we're talking Never about. Mind. Yeah. Never mind. Um, okay. Let's see. Creepy ass old lady. Yep. Um, what is creepy shoot, old What is lady? her name? Zirconia. Okay. Zirconia. Oh, Zirconia. Thank you. Zirconia is the older lady that runs the circus. She basically is kind of the leader that's the go-between between the um, Amazonist Quartet and the Eldritch Horror, who we'll talk about in just a second, who's a little bit less Eldritch Horror than some of the other Eldritch Horrors. But anyway, um, so she is the leader of the Dark Moon Circus. The The only reason she really stands out to me is because she is truly an older woman. But so far, the other, like, older woman style villains in Sailor Moon have all been like, you know, oh, that woman's probably like between 35 and 40, maybe is pushing 45, 50, but like they're not older. They're just like yeah. not young. Um, but she is actually older. And for that, she has a much more interesting aesthetic um, than some of the others, but she's still pretty forgettable to me. So to me, she's kind of like Master Pharaoh 90. She's like around there towards the end of Star Power. I'm going to actually put her all the, all the way at the end of star power because I, she doesn't, she doesn't register in my head mm. much. I do mm. like it, but I also like, I'm like, she's not, she's more eldritch than old in my brain. It like doesn't read as old. It just reads as like old croon that probably is a park pro. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I always so. felt like Zirconia was a manifestation of Nehelenia's fear of getting old. Very interesting, Ooh, Garnet. I kind of like that. that. I kind of like that. I'm here it for that. It kind of has to do with like the nightmare and the dr- Oh, I'm Yeah, I because it's all about dreams that. and goals and things like goals that. Goals and nightmares. I never yeah. made that connection, but like I'm here for it. I like it. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Speaking okay, of and and Nehelenia. last and last is actually Queen Nehelenia. Landon, tell us about Queen Nehelenia. Queen Nehelenia is our other sort of uh no, no, what's her name? Um, Maleficent sort of character. Uh, she is from the dark side of the moon kingdom, basically, and is resentful that Queen Serenity didn't allow, like, like took over the moon and wasn't willing to really, like, state the fact that they were, like, that they came from the same place and that they were of the same way. Uh, and 
Queen Serenity was very much like, I'm better than you. And Queen Nahalania was like, you're not. And so has just kind of been proving and carrying that chip on her shoulder all this time uh, and would like to take over the powers of the fallen moon kingdom in order to restore her kingdom. And uh, she's kind of a badass bitch and really does call out uh, the the harm that the moon kingdom caused. Mm -hmm. Uh, And for that is like an activist in this weird way, but also great. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. She's awesome. I mean, her activism um, ends at the point that she wins and and she gets to be queen and recreate the exact same thing. Um, but, uh, but, but like, she's but not better wrong. For her, so. She's not <laughs> wrong. She just thinks that she would be a better dictator. Um, but the criticisms that she has of Queen Serenity are not wrong. They're, they're on point. They're on they point. Are. Good. Yeah. Um, and I mean, who wouldn't think that they're a better dictator? I wouldn't be a good dictator. I know that. About no one myself. give Landon that kind of power. <laughs> it would just be, it would just be so much chaos. <laughs> So yeah, for that reason, for me, she um she's pretty she's pretty good. Like she's not my favorite Eldritch Horror. Wise Man is still my favorite Eldritch Horror. But to me, she's kind of in she's solidly in planet power. Like I like her in the same way that I like the generals and that I like Mistress Nine and those characters. I'll agree with you. I'm a little less. I'm a little more. Uh, uh, I'll put her. I'll put her there. That's where I'll put her. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I feel good about this. I'm gonna I do too. Look, I'm going to look over and see if there's any last minute changes I want to make. Yeah, so so my cosmic power is um is Tomoe, mm-hmm. Beryl, Black Lady, and Fisheye. Um, uh, Nihilani is the anti serenity. Yes, exactly, she is. My crystal power is um Prince Damon, uh, and uh, Tiger's Eye, Zoysite, Wise Man, and Hawkeye. My planet power is the rest of the generals, Mistress Nine, and uh, Queen Nehellenia. And um, and the rest of them, I don't need to verbalize because it doesn't matter once you get that low. It's all based on aesthetics. And some of these characters I actively think are not good and should be cut from the narrative. Uh, so that's basically my my tears. What would what would you say your tears basically look like, Lantern? My top <laughs> cosmic are Dark Lady, of course, Beryl and Doctor Tomoe. Uh, with Crystal Power, we got uh, Prince Diamond, uh, Fisheye, Tiger's Eye, Zoisite, Wa- uh, Wiseman, and Mistress Nine. Planet Power. We're sitting with uh, sorry, <laughs> Hawkeye. Queen um, uh, Nahalenia. Um, oh my Kaolinite. God, I can't even, Kaolinite, thank you. Couldn't even remember her name. I know, you, you just want to say like Tomoe's assistant, right? I do, He's, I do. Yeah. And then the rest of the knights sit in that planet power. And you're absolutely right. Other than that, no one fucking matters. <laughs> mm-hmm, pretty much like the only other characters I even like is my top three star powers here based on their aesthetic. I do have a lot of affection yeah, for these yeah, three, yeah, yeah. but uh, but yeah, meh to everything else. Everything else? <laughs> no bueno all right you guys so a last chance if you would like to participate in um doing some of the ranking with us I, I see a lot of comments from you sailor garnet so i've got you on there i also saw um our friend uh anime girl super kawaii had like queen Nehelenia at the top of theirs i, I d- disagree but but proud of your choice i think that's that's valid um anybody else please let us know uh, what you are interested in in those tiers or, or go through and do one because uh, we're going to end stream in just a little bit but before we do uh, we are going to do a uh, interstage window tradition that we don't always get time to do but we have time to do today we're going to share a little bit of good news so we're going to switch over here um, to a different a different little this is the scene right I put the wrong scene at first this scene and Landon if you could if you could tell us some good news today yeah I got some good news I'm going to load the page can they see it almost there we go okay we can see it now all right incredible 3d rendering from jupiter spacecraft reveals frosted cupcake clouds can i eat them you probably shouldn't because he's a gas because jupiter's a gas giant and would probably kill you uh but yes juno uh did a 3d rendering of the process of taking some images of all of these cool clouds that surround uh jupiter which is our gas giant our largest planet in our solar system and uh basically it looks 
fucking dope. Uh, wow. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a sixth grade teacher. And right now we're actually reading All Summers in a Day, which is a story that's based off of Venus. But I really want a story that's based off of Jupiter now because of these clouds. It would be dope to like live here with clouds that look like cupcakes. Oh my God. I could so see like a Sailor Moon bent for this too. Like um, something focusing on Makoto and you could have like, because Jupiter has a lot of planets, right? So you yeah, could, or sorry, or a lot is. of moons. So you could do something fun with like the different moons as characters. So um, some Makoto lovers, that would be a, a good Jupiter fanfic. Um, and you could have a bunch of OCs because you have all of those, uh, those moons and it would still be thematically resonant. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, it reflects clouds are like this because of the different ways that it reflects sunlight, but also the atmosphere around Jupiter and the way that the gases interact with one another, really causing these interesting like columns to exist within the clouds. Uh, and then also colors to exist in there too. I want to eat them. They look so tasty. I'm hungry. Yes. There's nothing. <laughs> so it is gas. <laughs> Yeah, Chibiusa has the asteroid belt. It makes so it makes sense. Exactly, exactly. And Ray has Phobos and Demios. She, she, you know, she has her little her uh, her crows, crows. to help her out. Yeah, so yeah, it could be a whole thing. It would be nice. It would be really cool. So um, basically, the end of the story here is uh, space is awesome. <laughs> space is really awesome, you guys. Okay, and good news. Yes. So here's what we're gonna do next. All right. <laughs> so I'm just gonna drag this over on top of what Landon is showing here so that you guys can see it. So, but I want to make sure you can still see Landon. So let me just adjust this a little bit. Okay. So here we go. Wheel of names. You can see we've got Garnet and um, anime girl, super kawaii in here. Let's spin. I love the noises that it makes. I love the noises. All right. Anime girl, super kawaii. Um, Get into my discord. Okay. And get into my DMs or get into my Twitter DMs. Here's how you get into the Discord. Um, and let me know where to send your stickers. Uh, you have 24 hours to answer. If I do not hear from you, Garnet, I will let you know and I will send you the stickers instead. How does that sound, you guys? Does that sound okay? Because I don't know if fair. Anime Girl Super Kawaii is still lurking and I don't know what their Twitter or Discord is or anything. So hopefully you're still watching, friend, <laughs> and you can know that you won. Um, so yeah. That is for the sticker giveaway today. So just to show you guys, because we've still got more to give away. We give away more each stream until we get them all. So we've got we've got five five different packs right here. So this is what they look like. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, you guys. Um, so that's it. That's that's our show today. Landon, where can everybody find you? You can find me at Instagram and Twitter at Land in Maine. Um, that's about it right now. Uh, do we still do we still need books from your Amazon wish list? Is that still a thing? <laughs> I mean, always. My Amazon wish, uh, wish list is linked in my Instagram. Um, I like I said, it is a sixth grade teacher. Our school policy has now changed to decide that uh, our school is not purchasing books for classroom libraries, which means that in order to provide reading for kids, if we don't want to go up to the library and waste our entire classroom to pick out books. Uh, it means that we have to provide them with our own money and the wonderful generous donations of people who are willing to provide. So if you can and are able to purchase some books, I make it a goal to have a diverse library with lots of different stories so that every kid feels seen in my classroom. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. If not, please just continue to enjoy watching our streams. That helps out too. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the applause, Kitty. Landon gets to live another week. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. You can find me in all of the places. You can find me right here on Saturdays with Landon usually. Um, and then also on Thursdays by myself. So next Thursday, we're going to be playing some more Monster Prom. We're going to be playing Monster Prom every single Thursday for Spoopy Month. Okay. So that's what we're doing for October. Ooh. And um, next week here, Landon actually is taking a break. She's got a real life thing to do. So uh, so we're going to play some of the Legacy. So we're going to do some Sims 2 Legacy. Tormund and Lily are going to college. Your kids are going to college, Landon. Oh, my God. Already? Yeah. Yeah, but it's okay. You're, you're busy at home with the baby. Your sugar mama uh, convinced you that y'all needed to adopt. So you have a child at home. Not sounds, a baby, really. It's, it's a child. To be, honest, to be honest, sounds like me. So Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, um, that's, that's where that is. We'll be to do a Tormund and Lily college years, uh, okay. next Saturday. You can also find me 
on the Twitters. That is my main social media. So that's where you can find all the latest updates, news for the stream, things like that. That's what gets posted on Twitter. Uh, You also can get in my Discord. The reason to get in my Discord, aside from just, you know, being able to chat with me, which is super fun, is that um, you can also get the best notifications there. So I actually control the notifications. If the bots don't send them out, I make sure they happen with the ping rolls um, because you can't trust the notifications on Twitch and YouTube to always send you to them, especially if you get busy. I've noticed that if you get busy for a couple weeks and don't come to a couple streams, they'll stop. It'll stop sending you the notifications, whether you want it to stop or not, uh, which is not fair. Like that's not fair. So you want to get in the discord for that. So that's all the places that you can find me. So thank you so much, you guys, for watching today. Uh, I had a lot of fun talking about Sailor Moon. We will be talking about Sailor Moon again next summer uh, when the last movie comes out for the Sailor Stars arc. And uh, and yeah, that was our show. And we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break from anime. Got to get back into some books, baby. That's right. That's right. We're going to go back to books um, (laughs) for, for a little bit before the end of the year. All right. Of course, let's find someone to raid. So let me go. Let me go out to let me go out to Twitch. Let's see who's live right now. I feel like this time of day, it's gotten to where a lot of my friends are not live at this time, and we end up kind of like raiding the same people over and over. But let me see if somebody new is live. Um, let's see. Let's see. Two o'clock on a Saturday. What else could they be doing? I don't know. Gosh, I don't know. But they're doing something. They're doing something. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay. So the team that I'm a part of warriors of light, one of their people is live right now. I'm just checking out the stream really quick, just to make sure that it looks good. But it looks it looks like it's going to be cool. Okay. He says he's painting Astra's toad as Venusaur. Okay, so he's doing like a little miniature painting thing and it's Pokemon themed. So I know you guys will like that. Um, I'm just trying to get past the ad right now. It's, it's a Genshin impact ad. <laughs> did, it, it's, did any of y'all play Genshin impact? I do not play Genshin impact. I, I just, I can't, it's too much of the gambling. You know what I mean? Um, although the anime characters look really super cute. So, uh, so yeah. Okay. Yes. It's, um, it's a digital painting. It looks like he's going to do Maybe some 3D printing? I'm not too sure. But it looks dope as fuck, you guys. Okay, here's that's who we're gonna raid. That's who we're gonna raid. Jackie Um Stowe. Jack Jacka Stowe? Jackie Stowe. I'm not sure. But here we go. Oh, Jacka Stowe. Cat came in. Hi, Kitty. They want to say goodbye. All right, you guys, that's who we're gonna Bye. raid today. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day. And don't forget to be awesome. All right. See y'all later. Bye. Bye.